sure that your phone is muted or away. If you can mute everybody, uh, except me, too. So now that would be great. We're still hearing some background noise, so. Yeah, that's coming from Dave Zeisler. So, Dave, if you can mute your microphone. Awesome, perfect. Okay, welcome to the awesome abstract webinar. Perfect. This is the third webinar that we've done on this. And once again, please mute your phones and speakers on your computers. Debbie is going to be monitor monitoring the chat box area for us. So when you have questions, just go ahead and type them in. We'll either address them, she'll address them immediately, or we'll hold them for uh, at the end of the session. Our topic today is how to create an awesome abstract. And this webinar is designed to take history out of creating and putting an abstract. So you got a call or just not very back? Symposium. Okay. Just ask him about that, what that was. Ira, will you please mute your microphone? Thank you. The presenters today, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm Susan Kennedy. I'm the current president of the PMI Dallas chapter. I have 30 years project management experience around the world. I'm currently an independent consultant. I've been involved with the UT Dallas Symposium as a speaker at the very first event 10 years ago, and I've participated in some capacity almost every year since. It's been my honor to be part of the planning committee for several years, and I do this because I love it. It's one of the best project management events anywhere. It compares with the more expensive international conferences, mainly due to the quality of the presentation. And you're here today to hopefully help you become part of that. Debbie, would you introduce yourself and tell us your role and your involvement with the UT Dallas Symposium? Sure. Um, I'm Debbie Samak. I'm the program program manager for the UT Dallas Project Management Program, which includes our executive MBA program and also the symposium. And like Susan, I've uh, been involved in all 10 symposiums, so we're really excited about this being the 10th anniversary. Um, and we hope to have a few celebrations this year revolving around it being 10 years. But I kind of oversee um, the planning of, of the symposium. You guys who have been involved in the past are probably sick of all the emails you get from me. <laughs> but, um, but I really enjoy it. You know, like Susan said, I, I think that this has become one of the best project management events out there. And we really try to keep it affordable so more people can attend. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Debbie. David, would you introduce yourself? Tell us about your involvement and your role with the PM Symposium. Yes, thank you, Susan. <clears throat> My name is David Pels. I'm the managing editor of the PM World Journal. We're one of the uh, co-organizers of the symposium, and I've been on the executive team all 10 years, and I have the luxury of uh, reviewing abstracts every year. <laughs> so, like Susan, I've had many years of experience in project management and uh, with the PMI uh, organization. And I also want to add that one of the things that makes this symposium special, in fact, is the invited papers and the blind review process that we use. So not only is the quality of the presentations high, but it's a real opportunity for professionals to present a paper and uh, make a presentation at a very professional conference. I Absolutely. look forward to seeing I look forward to seeing the abstracts this year. Okay, thank you, Jack. David. Renee, introduce yourself and tell us about your involvement. Renee, you may be muted. And, okay, we're going to go ahead and, and go forward until Renee gets um, whatever issues are worked out, and we'll come back to him as need be. As Debbie said, this is the 10th annual symposium. I say 10 years of leading edge project management sessions, partly because of the way that we set up the, the ground rules for this symposium. We're always looking for the new and, and latest and most interesting information. 
Also, we have such high quality keynote speakers at this event, and it's non-commercial. We do not have a vendor area. We don't have um, we don't have a lot of vendor activity at all. It's just simply knowledge sharing, working sessions by thought leaders and practitioners in the project management industry. Of course, it's grown in size and I'd say in quality too. Uh, over the 10, 10 years that we've had it, there have been thousands who have attended it. Debbie, do you want to talk just a minute about the size of the, of the uh, event and how it's grown? Sure. Um, our first year, the symposium was a one-day event, and we had 75 attendees. And we, um, we switched to two days on the second year. And last year at our ninth symposium, we had over 500 attendees and 55 speakers. So it's really grown to be a, a great event and gives anyone considering presenting a paper a great opportunity to get their, their information out to a large group of people. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. It, it's more than I've been coupled in the last short number of years. For this particular activity, for the submitting an abstract for the UT Dallas Symposium, there are some deadlines coming up. Monday, March 14th is the deadline for your applications to be submitted. So those applications are going to include some information about yourself and a headshot and the actual abstract that we're going to talk about today and how you're going to write it. The next date coming up after that will be Friday, April 8th, when the paper selections are announced. So all those applications and all the abstracts will come in in mid-March, and by about the first week in April, we'll announce who uh, has been selected to speak at the event. In July, then those research papers will be due, and the slides due for the presenters, and the event, of course, is in August 11th and 12th. The rules for submitting the abstract, we're looking for abstracts that are about a half a page in length. They're going to be 250 words or less. They should state the learning objectives. This is something new. And they should be related to the PMI, Talent Triangle. We'll talk about that in a minute. As always, no commercial sales content. They should be new materials not previously published. The abstract should focus on whatever the subject is in the title that's submitted with it. And it should be a new contribution to the topic. Now, the PMI Talent Triangle is something that is new this year. You're going to, if you've been submitting abstracts uh, previously for this event, this is something to pay attention to this year. So you're going to be needing to look at where did your topic fit in with the new PMI Talent Triangle areas. There are three areas that it, it could fit into, and it may cross over multiple areas. So. There is technical project management, and some examples of that would be topics related to advanced project management practices or techniques to improve your work breakdown structure or other technical type aspects of managing a project, such as, for example, how to gather requirements or risk management for your portfolio. Those types of, of topics would be considered technical project management. So we're not talking about technical in terms of IT or mechanical things. We're talking about it in terms of the project management technical area. Another area of the talent triangle is leadership. So topics that would fall under the leadership area would be topics like negotiation, communications, motivation, conflict resolution. And then the third area is strategic and business management. And those would be topics related to industry knowledge business acumen or alignment with customer strategy or perhaps finance or marketing, things like that. Now, an abstract is just simply a brief summary of a research paper. That's all it is. It's a summary of a paper that if you're selected for this event, you will go ahead and write. And it's, it's the first it's the first step towards speaking at this uh, event. Things that make an abstract paper really awesome would be a broad appeal to project managers, a relevant topic 
that project managers like yourself would be interested in, something that's different or innovative or helpful to other project managers, or something that really grabs your attention and makes you think differently about things. So in project management language, we have four major deliverables to get ready for the PM symposium and submitting this abstract. The first one is uh, preparing and selecting a topic and writing the draft and then editing and formalizing it and submitting it. So for preparing, we suggest you start at pmsymposium.utdallas.edu. This is the website that has the information and the links to the speaker's application and the forms that you'll need. It also has information from previous events. And there are some great examples there. So start with that website. And uh, I should mention that at the end of this webinar, we will send a link of the posting of this to everyone. So you'll have access to these slides and be able to go back if you didn't, if you weren't in a position to make a note right now of this. You can go ahead and download the uh, speaker application or call for papers. And in that speaker application, that's a two-page Word document that you can fill out that has the information and the place to fill in your actual abstract. All of this is, again, linked from the UT Dallas PM Symposium website. For 2016, our theme is going to be Project Management, a Key to Business Success. Some examples of topics that could fall within this realm are innovative project and program management, project management's impact on the bottom line, on a company's bottom line, or team collaboration, virtual teams, portfolio management and governance, anything that could be related back to being a key to business success, project management. So entrepreneurial project management, business processes, PMOs, waterfall versus agile or solving complexity. Case studies and lessons learned are also always a good topic and related to business success. At that UT Dallas uh, website, there's a, a tab you can click on for previous symposiums, and you can look at papers from previous years to get an idea of uh, these abstracts, how they're written, some of the topics that have been covered before, and help you in thinking of some new topics to look at. When you're selecting a topic, you want to consider the theme, as we just spoke about, and then think about your unique experience in relation to that theme. Think about anything that was different or challenging and tools or templates that you may have created in the past that would help. For example, do you have some kind of experience that you think could help others? If you learn something unique on a project that you can easily convey to other people that, that would be helpful, something that you continue to use now on your projects, that's the type of thing that would be helpful to others. Something that was an experience perhaps that you learned a lot from or something that was unique and different. If you were involved in a project that was particularly challenging or different, then we want to hear about that. We want to hear about what happened, how was it challenging, how was it different, and how did you respond to that? So think of projects that you've been involved with that were different or particularly difficult, and then we want to hear. Or if you've created some tools or templates that help other people, then um, that could be a good topic for your abstract. So something that other people have asked you for, uh, that you've already shared perhaps with others, or have been able to apply in other areas in your business or with other projects, that's good potential for a topic for the PM Symposium. Project managers just love tools. Also, when you're thinking about your topic, just think about what captures your attention. What is it that you're interested in? Uh, something that really, when you think back on all the projects that you have done in your experience, which ones stand out and why? What's something that really grabs your attention? 
And just think about, you know, those things that are interesting to you are probably going to be interesting to other project managers. Once you have a list of potential topics, then I suggest that you share those with someone else. For example, this month I was asked to write a magazine article about something, and I came up with a list of about five different ideas. And when I showed them to my husband, he immediately wanted to start talking about one of the topics. That's the kind of topic that we're looking for, the one that people cannot wait to start talking about. So share your list, get someone else's gut reaction to it, and um, select a topic. The next step in the process, once you've selected your topic, is time to get to work on the draft. And we're going to talk about one tried and true approach to writing a draft or telling a story, and that is the challenge solution result formula. Now, in the challenge solution result formula, the first section or the first paragraph of your abstract that you're going to write will be kind of setting the stage. This is the, the challenge that was in front of you that caused a project uh, to start. And you just think about how, how great storytellers begin. There's some kind of a drama at the beginning. There's some reason why things needed to change, some reason why this project needed to, to be started. So what was the problem? Or was it an opportunity? Was there some kind of an opportunity to expand your business or to do things better or to go into a new area that your company hadn't been in before? Why did something need to change? This is also called the business driver in project management speak, the reason that something needed to happen, a reason for this project. So set it up with about one paragraph, keep it brief, succinct, what was the problem? Some suggestions for ways that you would start those types of sentences, the challenge starters. One would be setting the stage. For example, stakeholders were growing restless because they couldn't get what they needed or they they couldn't find information or, or, or. Or, you know, the, it was a dark and stormy night type, type of a scenario where you, you set a stage where things were, were difficult or opportunities were passing us by and we had to do something. What was that something? Go strong here with your starters. You want a, an opening sentence that's clear and compelling and gives us a, a tidbit that makes us want more. You want to build the tension here. So continue on with, well, you know, one more disaster like this and our entire project management office was going to be disbanded. Or, or the business would fail if we couldn't find a way to overcome X. Or the, the customers were already starting to leave because they were looking for something that we weren't offering. Go ahead and, and, and build and grow that attention the same way that that you would in a in any good. And that people good make more choice. conservative choices when their decisions affect other people. And Dr. We Gary Bolton, you go on that person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, on uh, other ways to start your challenge statements, you could start with stating some kind of a surprising fact. You know, project managers just love facts. So the you kind of think, did you know? Some fact as in X percent of your stakeholders don't know the name of your project or. Most decision makers spend less than 30 seconds reviewing your funding request. These are surprising facts, perhaps, is something that you're not quite expecting or didn't know already that will grab your attention and kind of make you want to, want to learn more. So those types of facts that, that get you thinking, oh, what else? Or you can start with asking a question. Have you ever wondered what would happen if type of thing? Or where did this problem come from? We, we thought that we had it solved and yet it kept coming up again. Or it, how is it that what we put out there got so garbled and, and was so different from what we were trying to say? So, so you can just ask a question that's related to your project and, and take it from there. Think of questions that, that you yourself might have when you're, when you're, when you were initiating the project or when the project was becoming initiated. The next section is going to deal with uh, just a, a paragraph about the solution, as in 
what was it that needed to be done? When you were looking at this challenge and thinking about how to address it, then go into what needed to be done about it. And you can also talk here about who was involved, that there were significant stakeholders or high-profile stakeholders or high-profile customers or executive management in your company or external people. So anything in that area of who was involved that might be of particular interest or unique, then this would be a good area to talk about that just briefly and to talk about how you approached the issue just in general. So let's look at some suggestions for that. In the what needed to be done, you could start a sentence with something like, we had to find a way to X, or we began to analyze the data. And here's where we found something fascinating. And then go into explaining that. Sentences like that are going to grab our attention. We, we want to know, too, what was that fascinating pattern that you found, or what was it that you learned when you analyzed the data? Or what needed to be done? Well, we needed to find an expert in such and such. Or we needed to change the way that we did something. Um, or we needed to bring stakeholders together. We knew this was going to be key, but how to bring this diverse group together. Sentences like that will, you know, get us going on the solution area. We can also talk here about who was involved. So we needed top executives to recognize that something needed to change. Or perhaps one particularly out, outspoken customer had a different idea about what needed to be done. Then in that third paragraph, you're going to talk about the result. Here's where you kind of bring it home. Again, we're only talking about a half a page abstract. So you're going to uh, come in, hit it strong, hit it hard, be succinct, and, and give us a glimpse into the result. What was the outcome of this project that you did or the outcome of the situation? Was it delivered on time? Was it delivered within budget? Were expenses increased or reduced? In other words, we want to know the payoff. We love tax spending, but if it didn't end happily, then we want to know the lessons learned and, and where you went from there. Uh, most of all, you know, we want to know what got better, what changed, what was different. Were there some kind of spectacular results as a result? As, as, at the end of this challenge? If so, give us a glimpse into those in that last paragraph of the results. Again, we all love a happy ending. Now, once you've written that abstract, then step back from it, step away, and take a fresh look at it. Make sure that when you come back to it, you know what the point is. Make sure that the point of this abstract is clear, in other words, what you're trying to convey, we need to be able to recognize very quickly. Is it interesting? Does it seem unique? Would you want to hear more about this story? Because in this half a page, you can't tell the entire story, but you want to tell enough that someone would want to hear more. Ask somebody else to read it. And especially non-project managers would be helpful here because this abstract should be interesting even to someone who doesn't know as much about project management. It needs to be the kind of, um, we'll say, story that people want to hear more about. Check your word count. Make sure that you're within the 250 maximum word count. And then check your grammar and spelling and punctuation. I remember I, I reviewed an abstract once a few years ago that was submitted. And I thought the topic was really good, but I could not get through the grammar errors in it. And when almost every sentence had some kind of a grammar error, I, I couldn't pass that uh, abstract, even though I thought the topic would probably be good. But I knew that um, this, this would not be at the level of quality that's needed for this particular symposium. So pay attention to those things and uh, make sure that it's clean before you submit it. You want to do that full check, walk away from it, because I, I suspect that a lot of times once, once someone has written an abstract, it's very easy to say, okay, I'm done, hit the send button, that's over with, on to the next. You need to take just a little bit more time here and walk away, sleep on it, 
and then come back and look at it with your fresh eyes. Make sure that you've polished it up and that it's shining before you hit the send button. Now, in the, in the new section here where you're going to need to identify your learning objectives, you're going to need to uh, explain what people will be able to, to know or understand or do differently at the end of your presentation. And so you're going to need to explain things like upon completion of this session, the participants will be able to apply project management processes to, say, draft a, a charter if you're explaining how to if you're explaining a new template or create a new risk template or something like that. Or explain the project initiation process or the agile life cycle or, or, or. Or analyze the areas of highest risk in communications or in whatever your topic is. Another example would be identify strategies to overcome common issues when creating the X deliverable. Or, overcome common issues related to dealing with stakeholders or, uh, you know, the project, project profitability. Uh, another learning objective would be something like defining the project manager's authority and responsibilities and contrasting these to the sponsor's responsibilities. We're looking for learning objectives here that are going to be related to project management and and the outcomes of listening to your particular presentation. Other examples. On completion of this session, the participants will be able to identify three ways to do something, create value through portfolio management, or identify key questions to answer when recommending make versus buy decisions, or whatever it is. Fill in the blanks for your particular topic. Even something like discuss the recent trends in project management planning or in dealing with these types of issues or identify the key competencies needed when leading global teams. So these learning objectives, you're, you're going to need to apply what it is from your session that you expect people to be able to know or explain or identify when they walk out of this event. Um, Debbie, I'm going to ask, uh, do you have any other comments about these learning objectives? I know that at the university you deal with these all the time. And um, I've used them. <laughs> they really don't have to be complicated. Um, just very clearly state, you know, what you expect attendees to um, get out of your presentation. It's, um, it's that simply. Simply put, um, the main thing being though that, and this is what PMI wants to see, is they want to see that wording. Upon completion of this session, participants will be able to. Um, and they're just looking for that specific wording on any, any learning opportunities that are presented now. Okay, very good. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, keep it simple, keep it clear. Finish that sentence. Upon completion of this session, participants will be able to, and you'll be fine. Okay, once you've, you've completed all that, then you need to take a look at your own bio and uh, your, uh, your photo. Make sure that you've got a good photo to submit with it, and update your bio if you need to. That usually needs to be looked at at least once a year anyway. Do that one final review of the entire application. Package it up together and submit it, and then you're done. Yay! Uh, except for, you know, if you're selected, then the whole writing and presenting of the paper. But that comes next. That's for later. Here we're going to talk about what the selection committee looks for. And the photo that you see there is a photo from the 2013 Symposium Planning Committee. But uh, all of us who are on this line here are actually also in that photo, as it turns out. Let's talk about the abstract review process. And I'm checking again. Um, Renee, uh, are you able to speak to this slide? Okay. I'm going to turn this one over then to David. David, would you talk to us a little bit about what the process is 
for the abstract reviews. And sure. Unmute yourself. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> So the symposium team uh, establishes a an abstract review team of three to five people. And when the abstracts uh, come in, uh, Debbie organizes those uh, in, a, in a file system and provides a uh, spreadsheet where we can evaluate and, and uh, rank, if you will, the abstracts on a I think one to five scale, and we each independently review the abstracts. These are blind reviews. That is, the abstract is reviewed without the name of the author or any other identifier. Uh, so we evaluate the abstracts based on our criteria, what we consider to be important, and some other things that we agreed to beforehand. <clears throat> and submit those evaluations, that spreadsheet, back to Debbie. He, she then uh, consolidates the rankings and it comes up with a weighted average score for each abstract, and that then becomes the basis for selecting uh, the papers to fill the slots that have been uh, established for the two-day program. So it's really a quality-based uh, blind review process that we use in hopes of increasing the quality or improving the quality of the overall symposium. That's right. That's and David, about how many uh, abstracts do we review on, in an average year? Well, I think Debbie said there were something like 50 presentations last year. Uh, we get somewhere between, I would say, 70 and 100 abstracts in. So, and some, many papers are actually authored by two or more co-authors, which is fine. Uh, in fact, that may be a good idea if this is your first paper, but in any case, uh, we think that the review process that we have now after 10 years has become pretty effective. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And it is pretty rigorous. We spend a good bit of time on this. Uh, about how much time do you usually spend uh, reviewing these abstracts, David? Um, well, several hours. So I read each one and sometimes more than once but an abstract is only a page long, so it doesn't really take too long to go through them. Yeah, it's it's more the numbers of them because there are so many of them. Uh, and it takes a while. We really like to give each abstract the attention that it deserves. You have put your time and effort into this, and so as we're going through and reading these, we're reading them very carefully. And uh, it, it usually takes, that's why there's that, that bit of time between when the abstracts are due in mid-March until the papers uh, are, the selected papers are announced that first week in April, we need that time to get through all of the abstracts that we're reviewing and to give them the full attention that they deserve. David, let's go ahead and talk about now what it is that you in particular are looking for in those top papers and any common mistakes that people should try to avoid. Okay, thank you, Susan. <clears throat> well, believe it or not, the first thing that one sees is the title. So I encourage people to be somewhat creative in the title they select for their paper. What you want to do is not only attract our attention, but attract the attention of the participants at the symposium to attend your session. <clears throat> And then second, of course, the content of the abstract of the paper. We're looking for new new knowledge, uh, new developments, new ideas, some creative solution, and certainly something other than what we've seen in past symposia. So here again is a good reason to go review papers that have been previously presented in terms of content and format and uh, and so forth. 
We're also looking for uh, papers that are applicability to the audience. The, the audience is similar to the makeup of the PMI Dallas chapter that is representing the companies and the industries in in North North Dallas, North Texas. So we're looking for papers on project management that uh, can be useful to people in the technology industries uh, locally. So, for example, uh, we've had abstracts in the pa past about construction of underwater oil and gas uh, uh, facilities <laughs> and or some other construction type international projects that, that really don't attract too too much attention at the symposium so we're really trying to also make the uh, conference as useful as possible and uh, and and we're looking for experience based uh, you know, case studies, but papers based on what the author has learned uh, on his or her project. Uh, I'd like to uh, remind everybody that the definition of a project is generally something that's one of a kind, and frequently projects have never been done before exactly the same way. There's almost always something new and different about the project you're working on, whether it's the stakeholders or the requirements or the uh, process or the schedule or what have you. So generally you can find something new or different or perhaps unique about your project. So we're looking for those kinds of papers. Maybe the one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen has been the, the some subtle commercial aspect of a presentation. So, you know, if you're a consultant, don't try to sneak in a sales pitch for your expertise or your company. We're looking for really general knowledge to share with others and and uh, and so forth. The other thing is uh, polish your abstract. It needs to be professionally written and uh, and well well constructed so we're looking for you know well written abstracts and papers and we d we don't need papers that are too basic i mean frankly the people attending our symposium and probably you on this call are pretty experienced uh in project management so y you don't need to reinvent the wheel Talk about relatively new and more advanced topics and things that others are going to want to listen to or learn from. So those are some of the ideas, some of the things that I look for and have seen in the past. That's excellent. Thank you, David, for for sharing that. And I, I, I really second everything that you said. I agree completely. What I'm looking for in those top papers, first of all, um, one of the other reviewers mentioned recently, he reads the first paragraph. If he can't figure out within the first paragraph very quickly what exactly the issue is, then his scoring goes down on those. And so we're looking for something from the very beginning that captures our imagination or our attention. Uh, Consider it before you submit. Make sure that when you read it out loud, that if it doesn't make sense, don't submit it. <laughs> um, update it, change it a little bit. Um, I'm looking for papers that are interesting. Papers, that when I begin reading it, I think, oh my gosh, I want to know more about this topic. This is really fascinating. And I wonder how they got out of this situation or how did they overcome these obstacles that were in front of them or how did they get into this new market? I want something that really uh, makes me think, something that's logical. So it needs to, to you know, follow a, a logical format so that if this happens, then that, you know, and then the result. So looking for something that holds together well. It needs to be different and something that maybe challenges my thinking or presents it in a different way that I haven't thought of before. As David said, these are very experienced project managers on the whole who attend this particular symposium. 
So there, there are people who have done projects before. Most of them don't need the basic here's what a project is type presentation. They need the here's where a big challenge was and here's what we did about it. Or here is a, a template that we created after struggling for, you know, multiple projects with how to, how to capture this information better or how to do this particular piece better. We're looking for tools that we can use or information. Another thing that uh, Debbie Semek mentioned the other day was uh, she's noticed the trend that the uh, project managers are a, a fluid, it's a fluid career, so to speak. And so topics related to uh, your career advancement or uh, something to do with, you know, moving on to the next job or those types of topics are usually very well attended and very popular uh, presentations. So think in terms of your audience. Whenever you start to sit down to get ready to, to present any time, you always want to think about the audience. Well, in this case, you know, we're, we're telling you this audience is experienced project managers. They are sophisticated project managers. Uh, and as David said, like yourself, like uh, you people, you who are on this webinar call right now, generally we're people who have a lot of experience and we're looking for things that will enhance and grow that experience. In addition to that, remember this is a two-day event. 55 sessions. There are a lot of sessions to sit through. You want to make sure that, that your particular session is interesting enough to capture people's imagination and to, to hold their attention because, you know, especially by the end of that second day, people start to get a little bit tired. So think about ways that you can engage your audience during your presentation. Think about uh, things that will you know, turn light bulbs on, so to speak, in their, in their brains. Those types of topics, that's what we're looking for, something of, of real interest. So um, things to avoid, as, as I, I said earlier, watch the, those just simple grammar errors. Try to get all that cleaned up. When we're reading abstract after abstract after abstract, um, and, and we hit one that's got a bunch of, er of errors like that. It, it's just time consuming. You know, you stumble over the first, you know, grammatical error and then you hit the next one and, and then you start to lose attention. So make sure that you clean that paper up and that it's very clear and concise. Another thing is keep it within the word count limits. There's no reason to go over that. One of the most difficult things I think is to uh, cut down uh, what you're trying to say and, and keep it so succinct that it fits within those limits and still gets the point across. It's, it's a tricky thing to do, but just keep working on it. Go back through and begin eliminating unnecessary words and get it down to the heart of the matter so that I and the other reviewers can very quickly tell what it is this paper is about, what you're trying to convey, what the issue was and what you did about it. Those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. And as David uh, kind of alluded to earlier, we can, we can smoke out a commercial-based uh, advertisement pretty quickly. We, uh, we, we have read so many of these papers that if it looks like it's trending towards you're going to be telling us about how great a consultant you are, or how wonderful your product is, um, you're going to be cut from the list. So don't go there. Give us information that's generic that can be applied across all project management areas or all project managers and keep it generic and non-commercial. Another thing to watch out for is make sure that you are not plagiarizing. <laughs> make sure that this is not just a rehash of someone else's work, it's fine to go ahead and use a quote from someone and certainly when you're quoting statistics or, or research that's been done, you're going to have to quote, you know, someone else's work, but just attribute it. Give us where you took this from and make sure that it's got the uh, proper att att attributions to it. 
when we are reviewing and scoring these, just uh, again to kind of recap what we've said and, and to bring it together, these abstracts are scored based on how relevant we think they will be to our attendees. And we know, we know our audience generally. These are sophisticated project managers. We're also looking for things that are interesting and that have a well-defined topic. Rambling, no good here. So keep it succinct and clear. Original material. We, we read a lot of these. As David said, in, in almost every project you do, there is some aspect of it that's different. So that's, that's what we're looking for. There needs to be some practical application of that content, something that we believe a project manager could walk out of your session and immediately begin applying a different concept, a new tool or template, a different way of thinking about things, something that they can go and apply in their workplaces, because these are business people who are attending this conference. It also needs to be something that's timely and relevant, and the overall level and quality of the content is something that we're also rating on. So we're rating on high quality content, high quality writing, and the completeness of the abstract. Um, I, I have read them before where it, it kind of seemed to trail off after just stating what the challenge was. And, and I'm left wondering, did they come up with a solution? Is there an ending to this story? So make sure that that abstract kind of touches on those the, the main logical flow of the story that you're going to be telling us or the presentation that you're going to be given. Now, let's talk about some questions that we're often asked. We hear these from time to time. Um, first of all, uh, why are some papers not selected? Well, some papers are not selected because they're not project management or project manager oriented or not PM oriented enough. They're also excluded if we feel like that level is going to be too basic for our audience. If it's a content rehash and we've heard it before, then those papers are going to get excluded also. And of course, I said it already probably enough times, but make sure that grammar is clean. That's an easy one to do. If if we find our own brains trailing off, if the material sounds dry or boring, then that's going to get a lower score. So you want to make sure that the way that you present your paper is interesting. And I often think, you know, if I'm reading a paper that I think, oh my goodness, this is so dry, I think I'll bet there really is a good story in here, but I can't see it. So go back and think to yourself, what was it about this project or about this event or about this topic that was so interesting to me? And, and cut right into the heart of that and, and pull that out. That's what we want to hear about. Anything that, that even smells of a sales pitch is not going to be selected. And the reviews, as we said earlier, of another author's work without the proper acknowledgments, that will also get, get pitched. So those are some of the reasons papers don't get selected. Probably some of the main reasons. Uh, David, do you have anything to add to that list? Uh, unmute yourself. Yes, that was very good. Thank you, Susan. Okay. All right, then continuing on. The other question that we get asked sometimes is, uh, is preference given to past presenter? And in a word, the answer is just no especially since the reviewing committee does not know who has submitted the abstracts. So Debbie is not on the reviewing committee. She receives all the abstracts and she scrubs them before she sends them to the reviewing committee. So Debbie will know who they are, but we on the reviewing committee do not. So if we're reading these, we're rating them based on the content and the applicability and the quality and the interest of these uh, topics. If you happen to be a past presenter, we don't know it from reading this a topic, or we shouldn't. Um, if it sounds a lot like a topic that has been presented in the past, then it's going to get a, a lower score or be disqualified. So those topics need to be fresh and different. And we really strongly uh, encourage new presenters to submit, because we do have people who have been coming to this same event 
year after year after year, they're looking for new presenters and new information. So, uh, of course, there are, there are favorites who have presented multiple times, but there's not a preference given to those presenters. They're competing on the same basis as other presenters for that speaking slot. So we absolutely do encourage new people to present. We're interested in hearing different perspectives. Okay, so for more information, where do you go? Well, if you, <coughs> excuse me, just do a search on UTD PM Symposium. That will give you the links very quickly. You can also email to this address. I believe Debbie is the one that, that receives those emails, and she is the, uh, the, the Yoda of the PM Symposium. She knows the answers to just about every question. You can also call the number that's given there or go to the website directly at that number. And we are now ready for questions. So I see the first question from Wayne is, will the PowerPoint be available to review online? Debbie, will you address that question, please? Sure. Um, we are recording this, and I expect to have it on the symposium website by Friday. As soon as it's available, I will send out an email so you know it's there, and you'll just be able to download it and watch it again at your convenience. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, other questions? We have about nine minutes left. I recognize some speakers from past events on this call. I'd be interested to hear anything that, um, that you also thought of while you were listening to this or other questions that you may have about, about the process. Okay, I see the next question in. Uh, asking for just the slides. Uh, back to you, Debbie, on that one. Um, well, Carol, it's, um, yeah, we're going to have the presentation and we'll also make a PDF of the slides and both will be on the website by Friday. Okay, very good. So the answer is yes, you will have the slides in a PDF version. I see Vince has made a comment about uh, some links being broken on that 2015 PM symposium. Uh, okay, I'll have a look at that, Vince. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, Susan, I'd like to make a comment, uh, if I may. Yeah, presenting a paper is often a natural step in one's career. So if you've never presented a paper at a conference, please consider doing this. It, it's really a great opportunity uh, not just to share your message, but to get published. Uh, and as soon as you do that, that can go on your CV or go on your background summary. It can really be quite helpful in terms of, uh, you know, d distinguishing yourself. Also, the information presented in this uh, webinar today is applicable to really any conference that you uh, want to participate in. For example, I've presented papers at conferences all over the world, and it can really be fun and exciting to present a paper at a conference uh, far from home or for another organization, or even at the annual Project Management Institute Global Symposium. So consider getting your feet wet with the UT Dallas PM Symposium. Who knows uh, where that might lead? Thank you. That's a very good point, David. Thanks for making that. Yeah, absolutely. The, the tips and pointers that we put into these, uh, how to create an abstract for this symposium is applicable uh, anywhere that you might submit an abstract or an offer to speak. So, and, and in fact, I saw just recently uh, one of the attendees at this webinar uh, year before last, I, I noticed that that person submitted an abstract to speak at an event in New Orleans. And I saw the abstract. I happened to just see it before she submitted it, and it was selected. And I thought, look at this. It, it actually followed uh, the steps that we had outlined in here with the, the you know, challenge, solution, result type format, and it was accepted at another event. So uh, to absolutely echo what David just said, yes, you can take this and use these kind of steps to submit anyone to any other event. 
And um, I noticed that Wayne had had a question about uh, help with, <laughs> with figuring out where this topic fits into the talent triangle. That talent triangle is new, so this being the first year that, that we've been through this, we understand that it's, it's a bit challenging, a bit intimidating to do it the first time. I, I will say for starters, go ahead and take your best shot at it. Look at the topics that I've given on this presentation and see if you can find a good fit for, for what you're speaking about. And then if you still have difficulties, um, Debbie, what, what would you suggest? Um, PMI also has information on their website on, uh, on that. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll find the exact link and I'll include that in the email. Okay, very, very good. Thanks, Debbie. And, you know, also, if you're still struggling with it, just contact me. Um, Wayne, you know how to uh, reach me through the links in the PMI website or at any of the dinner meetings. I'm always there. And I'll be glad to uh, spend some time with you if, if, uh, if that will help. Okay. And any other, any other questions? We still have about four minutes left. Debbie, one of the things that uh, we touched on earlier in this session was the makeup of the audience. But you were speaking about that the other day uh, and talking about how the uh, industry background of most of the participants is information technology. Um, uh, what, other, what other industries do you see? IT is by far the biggest industry. Um, we see a lot of people in um, construction, um, and a huge, huge number of people in healthcare. And um, most of them are IT, but there are a lot of other people in other areas of healthcare um, that, that come. We'll always have the um, TI engineering people like that, but um, IT is, is our biggest. In addition, most of our attendees are not entry-level project managers. They are mid to high mid-level people. They're people whose employers will give them the two days off and in most cases pay for them to attend to maintain their, their PMP. So there, there really are not a lot of entry-level project managers. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So they're mostly mid, mid to senior level project managers. They're really seasoned with experience. Another thing, I, I, I at a uh, one of the symposiums a, a year or two back, I noticed that people from an advertising agency were speaking. So you know the industries are really branching out, and uh, you know arts and and the entertainment and gaming industries and things like that are recognizing the need for project managers, and so we're starting to see some of those different types of industries also attending the conference and and being there and sometimes even speaking. So although IT is still the biggest component, the the industries that they're coming from is. Uh, kind of surprising in a way. It's not the, not all the traditional uh, uh, TI people and and uh, Dell and HP. We're seeing you know some very different pr professions start to recognize the need for project management. And so again, topics that are going across a, a broad spectrum are going to be of interest. Yeah. <laughs> and I see that Vince has made a comment, non-IT specific project experience applied in a way that, are, that can go across multiple fields is also very interesting, not just to the non-IT, but also to the IT crowd, because IT people also have other interests in their lives. And so things that have common application across multiple uh, industries are what we're looking for here. Okay, well, we're at time, and we're going to go ahead and call this this is a symposium done. Thank you so much for your participation and your attendance. We look forward to seeing you at the conference, and we really look forward to reading your abstracts that we know you're going to present. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you.